Hello, can you hear me? Can everyone hear me okay? Perfect, perfect. Hi, Pandora. Good morning. Let's see, I, I unmuted everyone. Let's see here. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. There I unmuted myself. <laughs> I think what happens is I unmute everyone, but if somebody comes in after that, then it then I have to still go in and manually do it. So I'm glad I can hear you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I see Kimberly's in here. Uh, <laughs> Gunny, Carolina. All right. Well, it's great to see so many different faces. Welcome to uh, Platinum Steno. If you're here for the trial week, we're happy to have you. So this is the, uh, the lower speed. So we focus on 60, 80, 100. And then <clears throat> this evening from five to six will be mid speed. So that will be 120, 140, 160. And tomorrow morning from nine to 10 will be mid speeds, uh, the same speeds, 120, 140, 160. And then Wednesday evening from five to six, we do high speeds, uh, which is uh, 180, 200, 225. And then on Friday morning from 9 to 10, it's another high speeds. And that, again, is 180, 200, 225. So feel free. I'm not sure where you're at with your speed, but feel free to trail. Feel, feel free to push. And, uh, you know, I, I believe in both. So I think they both serve important purposes. So feel free to, to jump in anything that you like. Obviously, if it's, if it's too fast for you, you can always just get what – what you can and drop what you have to. So, all right, well, I'll go ahead and uh, um, mute everybody and then I'll unmute you after class just so if we have, you know, different people jumping in late or what happening to leave early, it doesn't um, disrupt, you know, the class. So I will definitely unmute everyone when the class is over. Okay, so we'll get started. All right. Here. And feel free to, you can always send me a little message, um, type in the, in the chat box if you need to send me something right in the middle of something. If you're having a difficulty with something or something's going wrong, you can always send me a little uh, message. And I periodically try to remember to look over there and make sure I don't have any messages from anyone. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and get started. I always like to start with words so that we can kind of get our fingers going, kind of wake up. All right, here we go, ready? Went, old, number, great, tell, men, say, small, every, found, between, still, name, should, mister, kind, above, head, took, Sometimes, for, live, began, almost, page, need, got, earth, need, far, hand, mother, year, high, city, point, learn, play, five, Forward, toward, using, himself, usually. All right. Now, yesterday, last, uh, it was yesterday evening, we, I actually gave you some frequently used phrases. We did not finish that, so I'm going to finish this page, okay? Again, you want to phrase as much as possible. Here we go. Into the, saw him, to get, I had, was the, you have, I could, you are, to go, you do, do you, there is, I think, you mean, about the, have you, what is, when I, where did, 
after that, and I did you have not see, of course, I write that final FK. That's one of my favorite phrases, final FK. On that to be by the in front out of the, is that right? That is right. There were, we had, he had, in your, she was, when the, when he, did you go, you said, when did, are you, on the sidewalk, saw it, I can, with you, I would, have been, that's initial V, final B, for the, to do, what happened, thousand dollars, before you, not now, with your, do you remember, look at, all right, to a, I couldn't, where the, to your. All right. My next drill is going to focus on time phrases. So I will give you the phrases and then I'll read you the sentences. So we've got at, at any time, T-N-T, at that time, T-A-T, at the time, T-E-T, at the present time, T-E-P-T, at this time, T-I-T, or you can just do initial T, final T. You have a choice there. Um, from time to time is F-R-I-M-T. All right, so here are your sentences. Were you in that bar at any time? May we arrive at the play at any time? At any time, you may be called to testify. Did you at any time respond to the call? Were you at the scene at that time? At that time, I was still married. I was not in school at that time. We were best friends at that time. Were you there at the time of the arrest? I was asleep at the time of the earthquake. Who was your doctor at the time? At the time, we were all in the car. Are you feeling well at the present time? We are not ready to go at the present time. At the present time, I am still in school. At the present time, I am unemployed. Are you prepared to testify at this time? At this time, I have some questions. Do you have a valid permit at this time? At this time, is the company solvent? From time to time, the matter was raised. We want changes from time to time. I noted changes from time to time. We saw him at dinner from time to time. All right. My next drill is going to focus on final SK words written as final FK. So the final F is used for the S like desk is written D-E-F-K, uh, risk R-I-F-K. Now, if you find that that's just too confusing, 
then you just have to come back for final K. Um, but it just saves a stroke. Okay. So I just want to reiterate though, risk is R-I-F-K, but you're going to hear risky. And that one, you know, if you want, you can write R-I-F-K, come back for long E or A-E. Um, otherwise, you can ju just do risk and then come back for K-A-E um, or K-long E and put it in your dictionary so it doesn't think it's risk, risk, and then key. Okay. So you have a couple options there. All right. Here we go. Ready? Come bask in the Florida sunshine till dusk. Each newcomer was assigned a task with a mask. He filled the flask from a large cask. A whisk broom will clean the corners. He kept his mask in the desk drawer. Most cars have disc brakes. A herniated disc can be painful and risky. The brisk breeze blew until dusk. A corn husk is a tamale wrapper. The musk ox, like the elephant, has a tusk. When in India, you must visit a mosque. The word Basque reminds me of France. The people whisked him away. His task was to make a mask. He hid the flask in his desk. The police whisked him to jail. Mollusks don't have tusks and whiskers. Use a whisk broom to clean the cask. This is a tusk from a musk ox. They were brusque as they performed the task. All right. Now, yesterday, I also went through automobile accident words, and we only got through half of it, so I'm going to finish the other half today. Um, I will give you all of the words that I have a, a brief for before I give you, the, you know, all of them together, okay? So you're going to hear tail light, and you can either write that as T, final L-T, or T-A-L-T. I've heard it both ways. Police, P-L-I-S, control, K-R-O-L, automobile, A-U-B-L, bicycle, B-O-I-K, westbound, W-B, Emergency, um, uh, initial M, final J. Paramedics, P-A-R-M-S. How fast, H-O-U-F-T. How far, H-O-U-F. Policeman, P-L-A-M. Yellow light, initial Y, final L-T. Green light, initial G, final L-T. Or you can do G-R, final L-T. I've seen it both ways. Red light, initial R, final L-T. Signal, S-N-A-L. Eastbound, E-B, damage, D-A-J. Southbound, S, final B, pedestrian, P-E-D. Um, blood alcohol level, that's B-L-E-F-L, Bleffel. Rear view mirror, initial R, final F-M. Black and white, B-L-A-T. Black and blue, B-L-A-B. And then, then if I ever hear blab, I would flag that. That doesn't come up very often. Point of impact, P-O-I-K. T. Um, after the accident, A-E-Z. I'm sorry, A-E-X. Before the accident, B-E-X. Left-hand side, initial L, final N-D-Z. Pickup truck, I write as puck, and then if puck ever comes up, I flag that. Uh, pickup, I write as pup, and then I always flag pup, so it's up to you. You can choose what you want to flag. Um, right hand side, I do initial R, final N, D, Z. And I think that's it as far as the ones that I know 
as, um, you know, to be briefs. So I'm sure I'm going to say some words that you may know a brief for, and that's fine. So you just go ahead and use what you want. Okay. All right, here we go. Ditch, pothole, patrolman, breathalyzer, emergency vehicle, accident scene investigation, whiplash, roll a tape, blood alcohol level, west, road, rear view mirror, swerve, center lane, black and white, north, fishtail, median strip, point of impact, distance, corner, southbound, number one lane, number two lane, number three lane. There's probably briefs for those, but I always write those out. Damage, strain, sprain, fast lane, slow lane, middle lane, eastbound, hurt, doctor, tail light, on ramp, off ramp, signal, at the scene, stop, curb lane, accelerate, decelerate, green light, yellow light, red light, curbing, police department, after the accident, left-hand side, entered the freeway, exited the freeway, police, injured, struck, policeman, direction, Flow of traffic, auto, how fast, how far, injuries, pickup truck, police report, bruises, south, miles per hour, miles an hour, control, paramedics, automobile, east, side of the road, Emergency, right-hand side, automobile, bicycle, gutter, street, before the accident, curb, westbound, rear end collision, black and blue. All right. Again, I know there's a brief for um, miles per hour, miles an hour. I don't use those, I write them out, but if anybody wants to share, feel free to share in the chat box if you have a good one and you like it. I just used to hesitate with those, so I just got to the point where I would just write it out. All right, names and addresses. Let's get our number practice in, okay? All right, here we go. Ms. Mary Ann Prinsky, 1730 North McVicker Lane, number two, Chicago, Illinois, 60639. P.L. Pointer, San Diego Gas and Electric, P.O. Box 1831, San Diego, California, 92112. Ms. Amy L. Blanchard, 3232 Route 88, Newark, New York, 14313. P.J. Corden, C-O-R-D-O-N, 4920, Brookwood Road, number three, 49, oh, I'm sorry, I almost repeated myself, Youngstown, Ohio, 45412. Ms. Sharon A. Roslin, White Bear Lake Area High School, 3550 McKnight Road, 
White Bear Lake, Minnesota, 55110. Ms. Susan G. Folman, F O L L M A N, Box 45, Route 5, Leeds, North Dakota, 58346. Mr. Darren M. Morris, M O R R I S, 731 Veronica Avenue, Illinois, 62505. Ms. Kathleen B. Bradshaw, B R A D S H A W, 121. 09 North 5th Street, Parker, Colorado, 80134. Mr. Craig Black, B L A C K, Bass Memorial Academy, Route 4, Lumberton, Mississippi, 39450. All right, how are we doing on time? Good. All right, I'm gonna give you one more drill and then we'll be done with drills. These are tangle tamers. So they typically are words that we don't have briefs for. So it kind of just teaches us to write what we hear. Okay, all right, here we go, ready? Bail bondsman, clinical study, customary manner, Soul function, faithful performance, more convincing, the vehicular homicide, ordinary care, common law, evidence includes, reasonably deduced, avoid damage, Evidence includes infringement action, transaction between, avoid confusion, similar circumstances, unanimous consent, interpret rationally. All right. I have the, oh, I always pull so many great drills and then we never have time to do them all. So it's really hard to pull away from it. I'm gonna do one more, okay? This is, this is not very long. This is a brief review, okay? So you're gonna hear accident, final BGS, damage, DAJ, railroad, initial R, final R, automobile, AUBL. Okay, here are your sentences. When did you buy your new automobile? His automobile was damaged in the accident. Where did the accident happen? The railroad car came loose. How much damage was done to the automobile in the accident? He was working on the railroad when the accident happened. You will run the risk of damaging your automobile. Stop your automobile at the railroad tracks. The automobiles were shipped by railroad. The machine was damaged by the blast. He sued for damages. All right, now I feel better. We got that one in. Moving on to Accident investigation. Um, this is uh, considered literary, so I'm going to read this. I'm going to start at 60, work my way to 80. Okay, since this is our first one, I don't want to um, overload anybody, so I'll start with uh, 60, work my way to 80 on this one, okay? All right. Accident investigation. Here are the following phrases that you will hear, okay? When I, to the, I was, to be, that the, 
from the, at the time, I don't recall, at the, they were, would be, of the, in other words, nerds, or you can leave out the E, um, of the, it is, off the, if the, in the, did not, or the, which was, it was, and the. All right, and the only word I feel like I should probably give you is just demolished. Everything else is pretty basic. Gouge marks, I guess that might be something to give you. All right, here we go, ready? I was assigned to the accident in question on March 17 when I got to the place where it had happened, I noticed skid marks that extended for some distance. And then I saw what appeared to be gouge marks. I noticed that the gouge marks were approximately 315 feet away from the curb and at the curb itself. We measured them at the time, but I don't recall their length or anything. They appeared to be very fresh and they were over toward the right hand side of the street. In other words, it would be in the area that would be traveled by traffic that was going west. The gouge marks at the curb were actually areas where small pieces of concrete had been gouged out of the top portion of the curb. It is my opinion that these gouge marks were caused by areas where the vehicle struck the surface of the roadway and then hit the curb. The vehicle was totally demolished. The front of the vehicle <clears throat> had taken a very large impact, a very strong impact. It appeared as if the vehicle had gone off the cliff on its nose and then rolled over on its top. The top of the vehicle was totally demolished. The final impact, I believe, was in the area of about 100 feet from the base of the cliff. And then the vehicle struck and flipped over from there. So it was approximately 100 or 120 feet. The car was going at a very high rate of speed. As I recall, the vehicle did not touch the ground or the dirt area or make any tire prints within that area, which was a distance of approximately 20 feet before going over the cliff. The fact that it went through a secure barrier 
made of steel cable and posts would also indicate that it was going at a very high rate of speed before it went off the road. It is my opinion that the excessive speed was the primary cause of this accident and the resulting damages. All right. My next selection is going to be on impeaching a witness. Let me give you a word list. You're going to hear verbatim, orange, unknown, authored, impeach, Nathaniel, Beverly Young, Lori Inglebrook, Merely, Susan, Rayburn, Gregory T. Conrad, Kirk J. Taylor, Substantial, I write that as S-T-A-N-L, uh, Language, Um, indicated, that's about it. All right, you're gonna hear, the person's going to say quote, so you're gonna write quote, okay? They say it, so you write everything they say, okay? All right, so this is going to be our jury charge. Here we go. I'm gonna start at 80 and work my way to 100, okay? Here we go. Your Honor, this is verbatim. This is the report of September 10, 2013. This report is authored by Deputy Gregory T. Conrad and Kirk J. Taylor. Quote, while at the location, a Mrs. Beverly Young, female, age 45, 11278 Orange Street, phone number 973-992-1180, contacted us and stated that she often talked with the victim, Susan Nathaniel, Mrs. Young further stated that an unknown male who lives somewhere in the neighborhood had been bothering the victim by asking her for dates. Mrs. Young said that the victim would not identify the male, but merely said that she would be surprised if she, Mrs. Young, knew who it was. The unknown male had been calling Susan Nathaniel since the death of her husband. Mrs. Young advised us that the victim stated that she would never date this male because she feared him, explaining that he was crazy, unquote. Now, as an officer of the court, Your Honor, I would like to explain to the court that when I interviewed Mrs. Young myself, she indicated the following that she not be interviewed specifically at the murder site. By that, I mean the Nathaniel residence. She indicated she, Lori Inglebrook, and Mrs. Rayburn 
and another unknown female who she does not know by name were apparently talking near the corner and the deputy approached them. She, Mrs. Young, told me that she did not make the following statement to the deputy, quote, who lives somewhere in the neighborhood, unquote. She said that Mrs. Nathaniel did not specifically point out this individual who was making the phone calls to be living somewhere in the neighborhood. She further told me that Mrs. Nathaniel did not tell her that this individual was asking her for dates. Mrs. Young further told me that Mrs. Nathaniel did not say, quote, would not identify, but apparently Susan Nathaniel told her, quote, could not identify the male. Mrs. Young further told me that <clears throat> the following language, quote, she merely said that she would be surprised if she, Mrs. Young, knew who it was. The male had been calling her since the death of her, meaning Susan Nathaniel's husband, end of quote. Mrs. Young said she did not recall saying that to the deputy who interviewed her. Obviously, there are substantial differences between what Mrs. Young is telling me and what Mrs. Young told the deputy sheriff on that date. I would suggest, Your Honor, that I believe that I can impeach my own witness. So there's a couple of briefs that we, um, that I read and I wanted to point them out to you. You can go back and practice them later if you don't know them. But specifically, I write that as S-P-E-F-L. Specific, I write just S-P-E-F-K. So that's a good one. Obviously, I write that as O-F-L, obviously. Um, husband, H-U-S. Uh, further, I write that as F-U-R-T. F-U-R-T for further. Um, deputy, I write that as D-U-P-T. And then the way that they, um, they uh, use the quotes and the unquotes um, when they transcribe this, when the officer says quote and then goes into the quote, he bas basically the reporter just spells out quote, you know, Q-U-O-T-E, comma, and then parentheses, while at the location, a Mrs. Beverly Young female, because he's reading from the report. Um, and then the kind of the same thing. They have it in quotes, whatever they're saying. Um, let me give you a, an example. Okay, here's a good one. So she, Mrs. Young, told me that she did not make the following statement to the deputy, comma, quote, the word quote, comma, and then in quotes, who lives somewhere in the neighborhood, comma, end your quotes, and then the word unquote, period, because they say unquote. So if they say the word, you have to still write it and use it in here, okay? Even though you're using the quotes, if they say quote, unquote, you still leave those words, okay? It's kind of like when you stitch, like my name is Jill, J-I-L-L, -L. you don't take out the, the J-I-L-L. -L. You know, I think a lot of people do that in theory because they think, oh, they, the, we have the right spelling now because they spelled it, but you still leave it in the transcript. Okay, that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions on that. So, all right, let's move into Q&A. All right. I have um, a one-page Q&A that I want to start with, and I'm going to start this at 60, work my way to 80, and then again at 100. Um, let me give you a word list. You're going to hear judgments, which is initial J, final MT, 
And then of course you can add the S on in the same stroke or come back for final Z. You're gonna hear entities, corporations. Um, I write that as K-O-R-P-G-S. That's how I write it. You're going to hear individuals, V-I-J. Satisfied, S-A-F, um, with the D, if it's satisfied. Dispute, action, partial, monies, involved. Um, so involved is V-O-F-L. Uh, portion, I think I gave you that. Additional entities. Let's see. I think that's about it for this. Now, this is going to be plaintiff questioning, strictly uh, plaintiff questioning and your answer. So if you're unfamiliar with the light board, um, you know, P is for plaintiff, the W is witness, D is defense, and C is the court. So this is how we get our four voice in with one person um, speaking, you know, or teaching the class. So when plaintiff comes in, if it's strictly Q&A, all you have to do is strike your question bank, which is the S-T-K-P-W-H-R. Those keys <clears throat> there, that indicates that it's a question. The answer bank, when the, the witness answers, it's going to be your F-R, P-B, L-G-T-S, all at the same time. And that tells you that the witness is answering. Now, if it's too much right now because you're just not used to the light board, don't worry about it. You can just get the words and then practice that later if you want or just get what you can. Okay. Now, if, if defense were to come in or the court, then you have to sign in the, the plaintiff to let yourself know a plaintiff is questioning. So the way we do that is plaintiff is S-T-P-H-A-O. We call him Mr. Snoo. So you would strike Snoo question and then go into to you know whatever key questions and then of course your answer is always just going to be the answer bank okay defense is going to be i f p l t mr if pelt that's what we call defense okay so um that's pretty much what you need to know um for the q a today and again if you're not used to that it'll come with time it just takes practice okay all right so i'm going to read this one time at 60 and then I'll go back and read it again at 80. Okay. All right. And it's strictly Q&A, so it's kind of nice. You want to get used to it, you can strike snoo and then question so that you know, you know, okay, it's plaintiff. Here we go. Do you have judgments against any of these corporations? No. Do you have judgments against any individuals that were associated with these corporations in any way? No, not other than the two I have listed now. Now, have these two judgments been satisfied in whole or in part? Satisfactions of judgment in full have been filed. Both judgments, both judgments. Now, as to the first action you mentioned is that the satisfaction of judgment coming from the money that is in dispute in this action it is my understanding it is yes sir and then there was a partial satisfaction in the second action you have mentioned also involving these same funds. Is that correct? That is my understanding, yes. Now, other than the monies, that are involved in this action, 
how did you obtain satisfaction of judgment in this second action? How did you obtain the $10,000? I did not obtain any additional money. The debt owed to me had been satisfied. So I filed a satisfaction of judgment to clear the record. What person or entities satisfied the portion of the judgment that is not involved in this action. As I said, there was no additional money paid. There was no additional money paid to you. That is right. You never received any more than the $30,000? That is right. Okay, so I'm gonna read that one more time at 80 words a minute. Here we go. Do you have judgments against any of these corporations? No. Do you have judgments against any individuals that were associated with these <clears throat> corporations in any way? No, not other than the two I have listed now. Now, have these two judgments been satisfied in whole or in part. Satisfactions of judgment in full have been filed. Both judgments, both judgments. Now as to the first action you mentioned, is that the satisfaction of judgment coming from the money that is in dispute in this action. It is my understanding. Yes, it is. And then there was a partial satisfaction in the second action you have mentioned, also involving these same funds. Is that correct? That is my understanding, yes. Now, other than the monies that are involved in this action, how did you obtain satisfaction of judgment in this second action? How did you obtain the $10,000? I did not obtain any additional money. The debt owed to me had been satisfied. So I filed a satisfaction of judgment to clear the record. What person or entities satisfied the portion of the judgment that is not involved in this action. As I said, there was no additional money paid. There was no additional money paid to you. That is right. You never received any more than the $30,000. That is correct. All right, let's move into another transcript and I'm going to read this at 100, okay? Let me give you a word list. You are going to hear traffic officer, 
job classification, black and white, B-L-A-T, passenger, P-A-E-J, vehicles, VEEK, highway patrol, vehicle, um, let's see here, identification, I write that as um, F-I-G-S, might have a different way to write it, monitoring, freeway, vehicle code violations, disabled motorist, patrol, academy is A-K-D, uh, I gave you disabled motorist, uh, graveyard shift, aspect, functions, instructions, uh, Officer Jones, dissertation. All right. Now, this is going to be uh, defense questioning. So you're going to identify him as IFPLT, and then once you identify him as defense, then you just strictly hit the question bank after that because nobody else is going to come in except the answer, and then that, it'll just be question and answer back and forth, okay? All right, here we go. I'm going, I'm going to read this at 100. At that time, were you employed by the state? I was employed by the state. In what capacity were you employed? State traffic officer. So that your job classification as of the time of the events that are the subject of this lawsuit was the same as now, except that you were working out of a different office. Is that correct? That's correct. On that date, were you driving a black and white vehicle? No, I was not. What were you driving? I wasn't driving. What were you doing? I was riding as a passenger. And in what kind of vehicle? A marked highway patrol vehicle. A black and white vehicle? Yes. And were you on duty at that time? I was. Do you remember the identification number on the vehicle that you were driving at that time? I don't recall the number. What was the type of tour or duty you were on? On the graveyard shift. That's the time. What was the type? Were you on enforcement or what? Routine patrol. Now, can you describe basically what routine patrol consists of? It consists of monitoring the freeways for vehicle code violations, assisting the motoring public. Monitoring traffic for vehicle code violations? Yes. And you said you were assisting traffic. In what manner? Disabled motorists? Anything else that is part of routine patrol that you can think of? No. And regarding this aspect of assisting disabled motorists, did you have some kind of booklet to guide you in how to perform these functions? No, I did not. And from where did you get your instructions on how to perform your duties in assisting disabled motorists? Most of it comes after you come out of the academy. You ride with another officer 
for 30 working days. On the date in question, had you just come out of the academy? No. Is there any reason why you were riding with this officer? Yes. What was the reason? On graveyard shift, you ride two men in a car. Is that policy? Yes, it is. It's for protection. What time does the graveyard shift start? At 10 p.m. Then am I correct in assuming that your education and training in the duty of assisting a disabled motorist came from whatever training you received in the academy? I don't understand. How did you know what to do as far as assisting the disabled motorists? This is given mostly through your training officer. After you come out in the field and start working. When did you come out of the academy? July 24. Do you remember the officer that you rode with for the first 30 days after you got out of the academy? Yes. What was his name? Officer Jones. Now, am I correct in assuming that you got no training while you were in the academy on how to perform your duties in assisting the disabled motorists? A very short dissertation on it. What do you mean by that? <clears throat> we were to assist all disabled motorists. <clears throat> All right, we have time for maybe just one more. I'll give you guys one more at 100, okay? This has a little bit of, um, well, the court comes in. Defense is questioning, but the court jumps in. And then it goes over to plaintiff, so it gives you a little bit of four voice. Now, Mr. Terrell, you have stated that when you first saw Diana, she appeared to be a normal, level-headed young lady. That's correct. Did you ever see Diana when she was under the influence of some kind of drug? No. I did not. Did you ever see Diana when she appeared to be drunk or under the influence of alcohol? No. Did you ever hear that Diana had some kind of a drug problem? I had heard some rumors that she could have been a user. I probably heard it from my sister. We sometimes discuss family problems and it may have come up. We knew that something was wrong. We didn't know what indicators to look for, but we knew something was amiss. You said earlier, your sister, Karen. Now, is that Diana's mother? Yes, that is correct. That is your sister or half-sister? My half-sister. That is Diana's mother? Yes, it is. Were you ever told that Diana was heavily into all kinds of drugs. No, never. That Diana had experimented with marijuana? 
No, never. What about PCP and cocaine? No. Okay, what about the use of LSD or mushrooms? No, nothing. Your Honor, I have nothing further at this time. Redirect, Mrs. Delaney. In conversations with Mrs. Bishop, the school psychologist, did she ever tell you that she suspected Diana was into crack? Was she aware of anything? Your Honor, I will object to the last part of the question. The last part of the question is objectionable. All right, I will restate it. All right. Well, how'd you guys do? You guys do okay? I'm tired. I'm just plodding along. <laughs> I'll be honest. Hey, your hair looks pretty. Oh, thank you. Yes. So does yours. I love it. Oh, thank you. Look thank how you. short it is. It looks awesome. <laughs> I love it. Doesn't it feel good to get your hair done? I feel like I lost 10 pounds. Oh, I know it is. It's like, oh, I can move my, my neck mm -hmm. now. It's mm -hmm. amazing how heavy it gets, you know? Mm -hmm. It looks amazing. Thank I love you. it. Thank I you. I love it. Well, does, any, does anybody have any questions? No? Feel free to type me a message if you want, if you don't want to use your mic. Um, so basically, that's pretty much how our classes are run. You know, we start with drills. We go into literary or jury charge. We start one, and then also, you know, we always do the other one. Um, and then we go into Q&A. Um, sometimes we do read back. Um, I try to give a variety of q and A. I I like to always try to do one where, um, you know, I read it at 60, again at 80, and again at 100. Um, then other times I'll just start at 60 and work my way to 100. Um, I always take in suggestions. So if you guys have something you would like to work on, let me know and I'll pull that. I've got lots of different drills. So if you need to work on stitching or you know, numbers, whatever it may be, ordinals, shun words, itty words, whatever it may be, I can always pull it. So great speed building. Thank you so much. See you at five. Oh, that's awesome, Carolina. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so don't forget we have class today from five to six mid speeds. So it'll be 120, 140, 160. And again, if you're, you know, if you're in the 80, 100 range, still feel free to go and you just push if you want and uh, get what you can. So don't let that deter you. And uh, so I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. And thank you for attending. Thanks for attending live. And again, if you can't ever, if you can't attend the live, you can always come in and watch the recorded at a later time. So that's the beauty of online classes. So uh, I like the camaraderie when everybody can attend live, but I know it doesn't always work for everyone. We got a lot of people that work and just can't make it happen. So, or some people can do the evening classes, but not the morning and vice versa. So whatever works for you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to email, um, email us on, uh, there's an email address on our webpage and uh, it'll get to Robert or myself and we'll get back to you. So um, let's see, number stitching, number letter drills would be great. I also love funky speed building. All right, that sounds good. That sounds good. I'll pull some, that gives me time. So I will pull some, uh, some fun speed building also with number stitching. I know that seems to always be the, the, the one thing that everybody likes to work on numbers, drills, um, with, uh, ordinals and, uh, as opposed to, you know, first as opposed to one and so on. So I'll bring all, I'll bring some stuff so we can cover that. Okay. All right. Thanks well, Jill. Thank you guys. Have a great day. You too. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye.